Yes, hello and welcome to Curl 8.5.0. This is December 6, 2023. Uh, I just did the release uh, a little over an hour ago and uh, this is, of course, I am Daniel Stenberg. I do, I lead the project and um, I work for Wolf SSL. We do curl support all days. That's my social stuff. You can find my site. This photograph is actually where I sit right now. It's here in my home office in Sweden. So today I wanted to go through the regular setup that I do on, um, you know, the release videos. I'm going to start with some numbers and a little bit of the security specific things that we did in this release. I want to mention the two changes we have, uh, a few of my favorite bug fixes. I think I have 16 this time to talk about. There are many more, of course, in the changelog. Two things that we are going to remove in the future. I just want to emphasize, highlight, talk about it and uh, let you say what you want about them. And then I have a number of things that we are, we might merge soon possibly for the next release. Uh, yes, this is release 253. Counted from the very beginning, uh, of course, it was not even named um, curl from the beginning, but still. In, for this release, we had a pretty big participation as most releases. We have 78 contributors and we had 40 authors who actually um, wrote commits that we merged into Git in this release. So the total number of people, of course, keep uh, growing and um, it's cool. So keep keep submitting your issues and pull requests and whatever. This was an ordinary, quote unquote, release cycle. So we did it in eight weeks, 56 days. And that sort of adds up to 9,392 days since the first curl release quite a long time uh, you see so just 600 days left until the 10,000 uh, days since curl was released again we started this project before it was named curl uh, um, so let's start out with the security advisories for this time we have two uh, to talk about one medium one severity medium one severity low uh, they're they're not alarming in any way but i wanted to talk to you about them and tell them a little bit of, uh, tell you a little bit of the details here and again you should not really read about them on nvd or trust what nvd says about them because you know by now that they will say whatever they want and it's not necessarily at all the same view as others uh, like us <laughs> have uh, on those issues so let me start with the severity medium one reported by Harry Sintonen. Again, uh, I think he's approaching 20 CVs by now. This is a way, basically it's a flaw in curl in how it handles the public suffix list. And the public suffix list, uh, in case you don't know or you don't remember, it is the list of domains that are <clears throat> domains that are treated and presumed to be public suffixes. And one of the most sort of commonly known and used ones is the co.uk, which basically, basically means that that's a public suffix. It's supposed to be treated as, <clears throat> treated differently for cookies. <clears throat> Sorry, you're not supposed to be able to set a cookie for that domain, co.uk, because you would then set it for a huge number of sites. So. Carl, of course, as any cookie engine on, on the web today, uh, then checks that if you try to set a cookie for a PSL domain, it refuses, uh, or it should. <clears throat> In this case, it fails to do that pre precaution uh, check uh, avoidance because of a flaw, so that if you would ask to set the, um, the cookie using a mixed case or um, not only lowercase, you would sort of circumvent the check. That's why it's called a mixed case PSL bypass. So by, by if you're as a site, then set the cookie for, and you say, here's for this domain, 
co.uk, perhaps with the UK, then in uppercase, as I mentioned here in the text, uh, curl would accept that because he wouldn't detect it to be a PSL because of a flaw in the check uh, in the code. <clears throat> Pretty stupid, but this allows a server, for example, if uh, to set to kind of a super cookie that would survive and get used on, on all of the all sites on that particular domain, including then a PSL. So you could set it for a huge amount of sites. And that's not how cookie is supposed to work. And then you, you would sort of create a kind of super cookie in a way that uh, could be bad, could be uh, maybe not that terrible either, but uh, still a security flaw, we consider it severely medium. Um, and yes, let's leave it at that. Rewarded uh, 2,500 USDs. I think with this reward, we are now above 70K USD in reward money in total since we started the bug bounty program. Kind of cool. The second flaw is uh, severely low, reported Maximilian, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Archimovitz. Archim Archimovitz, I don't know. I'm sorry for that, uh, but that's just me. Um, so this is a bug that is um, basically when when curl, you know, HSTS is the feature when curl saves a domain and it knows that starting now it should never speak clear text HTTP to this site. It should only speak HTTPS directly. So if you would go to HTTP colon slash slash the site again, it would not use clear text. It would switch to HTTPS directly immediately. And so by that avoid the, the sort of the clear text uh, redirect bounce thing that you would otherwise get. And in this case, if you would use an HTS file name as, as a cache uh, and you would have a very long file name, like in a, in, in a normal file system, like 255 bytes, or it's usually that's maximum. Uh, <clears throat> if you would have a file name close to that limit, curl would actually accidentally flush the entire HTS, HSTS cache and you know, sort of start over because of it would when it creates a temporary file to save it uh, it would add a few bytes to the file name and therefore create a too long file name so it would fail the creation blah 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 um, anyway uh, that stupid bug is now also fixed so the, we we consider this a severity low because it's kind of a stretch that you would actually suffer from it but if you have a script and if you just happen to do this it could be it could be doing things wrong. It was a silly flaw, of course, but um, yeah. We have a few things added in this release. Well, I count two changes and they are pretty basic. And uh, let me tell you about them. So the cockpit uh, in curl is now extended with. So we now support the these native CA bit you can ask libcurl and actually you and you can do it with the curl command line tool to to use a native ca store basically that in, in most cases that means your windows ca store it depends a little bit about uh, on the tls backend in particular but if your tls uh, well, if the right combination of support is there now you can ask um, your curl build that is built to use GNU TLS to also use the native CA store, which in this case then means Windows CA store, which is kind of convenient if you're if you want to make curl actually work more similar to your Windows native stuff. <clears throat> um, and um, maybe not such a well. This is a change because now we consider HTTP3 no longer experimental if you build with NGTCP2 backend. So from now on, we officially support HTTP3 uh, in, in official builds. It is still, I mean, it's yay, but it's still going to be a little bit of a hurdle for people to actually use and deploy this because 
the most widely popular TLS library, OpenSSL, does not have the necessarily necessary APIs for this. So you can't build curl with regular OpenSSL with HTTP3 support. So I know that is going to be a sort of a deal breaker to some, but if you are able to use one of the libraries that support the quick APIs, you can build it and run it today. And GCP2 supports quick with a lot of different libraries. So there's a, there's a large sort of collection to pick from, but not OpenSSL right now. Possibly uh, going forward, we might get OpenSSL support as well, but it's, it's not there and uh, it might take a while. So with those two simple changes, we can just sort of just move on and say that we have 188 bug fixes in this release. And uh, yes, some of them uh, I want to talk to you about and uh, sort of my quote unquote favorite ones, uh, basically a bunch of, of, of things that we could talk about or, and just sort of maybe be aware of maybe they are the, the most important ones to most, most people. But first, uh, it turns out that we, we introduced IPFS support in the curl tool, I think at the previous release. And it turned out that the the management of IPFS URLs was a little bit uh, inferior. So it's improved now, it works better. So it should work with more gateways and more IPFS URLs pretty much. And a fun thing that we introduced, actually, I think we introduced it in 2018 to non-Windows curl tool users. We started showing headers in bold in terminals. And if the terminal would support it. Um, and starting in this release, we can also support bold headers output in the curl tool in Windows. So just uh, five years later or something like that. I think it's cool. It, it, it increases readability when you output things in, in the terminal. <clears throat> Fun thing, it turns out that if you're using the progress bar with curl, you know, the dash pound sign progress bar or dash dash progress bar, uh, it is you know, a different progress bar. And when you download stuff, it turns out that if you had a terminal wider than 256 columns, we would actually output it wrongly. When I created the progress bar in the in memory buffer, it would not fit the carriage return, the final byte on the line. So it would have just output uh, the line uh, in a broken way. Didn't really work. Um, and now starting with this release, when you do curl dash V as in verbose or lib curl with the verbose option set, you will s curl will now uh, show you the list of IPs that is going to try to connect to. It is useful for debugging. When you want to connect to a site that resolves to a number of IP addresses, it will, it will then show you what IP addresses it resolved to. And not only, I mean, in, it already showed you which IP addresses, uh, IP address it tries to connect to, which then could be many if it would iterate through many. But if it, if the, it works with the first uh, IP address, you wouldn't see the other ones. Now you can get the other ones as a sort of helpful debug thing which is good when you want to, well, debug issues. Uh, similarly, we also added more verbose output about the TLS handshake, uh, some algorithms and stuff uh, when in the when OpenSSL has negotiated a T TLS sort of connection. We fixed or we improved the uh, DO DNS over HTTPS handling, really, uh, which means that in most cases, when you do a, a DNS over HTTPS, it's a it's actually a HTTPS request, right, f to get the DNS information. But in most cases, you do two DNS requests: one for the IPv4 address and address sys, or and one for the IPv6 addresses. That's a DNS A record or a quad A record. So they're done. They're done by two different HTTP requests. And Starting now, we make a better. We add, we set the pipe weight internal option, which means that it uh, tries to a higher degree to use the same the same connection for both requests rather than doing two connections for those two 
those two requests. Basically, uh, lowering the amount of connections necessary for this from two to one, which is a sort of it uses few resources and just it could be more effective in some ways. I fixed a few problems with the curl easy dup handle function in case of out of memory in the middle of the dup handle operation. It was a kind of messy situation there. Again, we fixed problems with the AWS SIG v4 authentication mechanism, which is a um, no judgment from me, but it's a really messy authentication mechanism that is really complicated to support. And uh, we, of course, found a few more edge cases. I don't think we have found the last one, but when you know, we're slowly, uh, slowly fixing things one by one. So it becomes better day by day. So now it's a little bit better again. Uh, we, <laughs> with this bug fix, in this bug fix, we removed HTTP2 support from curl when you build it to use hyper, which sounds weird, right? But it turns out that our, my implementation or my adjustment for using hyper, you, you, uh, if you remember, hyper is an alternative HTTP backend for curl. So you can build curl to use hyper instead of the native HTTP code. It then replaces part of curl with hyper instead of curl code. It's an experimental feature and it turns out that I had done it slightly wrongly. So the HTTP2 support with hyper was broken, broken to the extent that it was better to just remove the support and we are going to work on remodel that and do it in a different way going forward. So, um, we removed the HTTP2 support because it turns out uh, I had misunderstood the API. There might be some features missing from the API. And it turns out that in some cases, it turned out to be really terribly slow and unusable pretty much. And now by removing HTTP2 support, we at least avoid those really terrible pitfalls. In, in, the, in the Tarball release of curl, we have now dropped support from, for a lot of older Visual Studio project files that we used to generate in the, in the distribution. And we added a new one. Uh, well, it's not the latest one, it's a um, newer one. I don't remember exactly what they have different, you know, they call 2018 or something, but internally it's 14.20 and 14.30 and stuff like that. I don't remember the exact details. We dropped a few, we added a new one. We're probably going to drop them all going forward because nowadays you can regenerate these with from CMake. So we probably don't need to generate them ourselves anymore. But uh, in this release, we do. We fixed the thing when, again, this is, you know, the, the opt native CA I mentioned as a change for GNU TLS. We bug fixed the feature for OpenSSL so that it also imports the intermediate CAs that Windows might have stored uh, because it's sort of that's what sort of users are going to expect and it <laughs> increases the usability of this and probably going to make users happier in general. And we've bug fixed this little thing so that uh, when you use OCSP stapling, called verify status actually in TLS lingo, uh, it sh it shouldn't be done. it shouldn't be attempted when we reuse session ID to do a, a shortcut handshake really because it's not supposed to. So we're not supposed to do that. But and if we did, we would get a failure. So now we don't do that anymore. Okay, and the last four bug fixes to mention for this time. You know, we have a lot of different protocol combinations and you can ask for different protocol versions for different layers really. So I had previously not done it like this, but if you ask for a specific IP resolve option, that means you're asking for IPv6 or IPv4, that's typically the, your local connection. So I didn't think it would apply to the SOC, uh, SOX proxy as well, but now it does because it seemed most reasonable. So if you're asking for a IPv6 connection or an IPv4 connection specifically, you're now asking for SOX5 to resolve uh, or use that IP family as well. 
maybe not a bug fix, but a, a small little improvement is that uh, we introduced a sort of the, the perfect hash approach to find this URL scheme when you enter a, a URL, you know, searching among all the known schemes. We now no longer loop to find the the scheme, we have a, the, the sort of perfect hash mechanism. So we just uh, calculate the hash and it will automatically just match a single scheme. So it'll just find schemes a little bit faster. Probably no one will ever notice because you don't do that too often normally, but who knows? A little fun thing we now, basically the, the ALPN is a way, ALPN is a TLS extension to select what protocol to talk behind TLS, right? Application layer protocol negotiation is the term for the ALPN. And it actually, it was introduced for HTTP two. So you could say to the server, I, I want to speak HTTP two or HTTP one, you pick the one that you can support. And the server then responds and say, Hey, I want to go with this version going forward, which is cool. And when, when that was introduced, HTTP 1.1 and HTTP 2 was the only one, they were the, the first ones and the only ones for a brief period of time. And then later they also registered HTTP 1.0 ALPN code. But it turns out then that early servers that support ALPN, they don't know the HTTP 1.0 ALPN. They only, one, they only know the 1.1. So even if you want to speak 1.0, you still have to use the 1.1 ALPN. So that's what curl does now for sort of compatibility with the real world out there. Uh, it's a little bit weird, but it turns out that there are servers that work better this way. What do you do? This is what we do. <clears throat> I went through and made sure that all curl command line, sorry, uh, all libcurl man pages, that's the, all the man pages for libcurl functions and libcurl options. There are about 480 of them. All of their examples, the example snippets in their man pages, they all now compile without, well, they compile warning free. So they, they actually, you know, they use the right symbols. They don't use uh, uh, undeclared variables and uh, they actually don't declare unnecessary variables either. So um, I think it's a, it's a big win because it makes the examples better. Now they're proven to actually compile. I haven't run them because they're usually incomplete. So, but at least they compile. So we've, I found a lot of mistakes. So they, they're certainly much better now. And now they're also tested in the CI and everything. So when we, we update man pages and create new man pages and everything, they we will spot if someone creates or you know fails to create a, an example that actually is a lib curl proper. Kind of cool. So I want to highlight two things that we are going to remove in the future tiny things, it's not going to impact a lot of people, I think. First, we're going to remove the support for the NTLM underscore WB option. And this is a really niche feature. It's, an, it's a support for NTLM authentication, but a particular flavor of it using, using an external tool, a win helper tool called, I don't remember off the top of my head, but anyway, it's a very niche uh, feature where basically no one is using it. It was quirky. It has quirky implementation. It use, even uses fork in exec. Um, we don't have a very good test coverage. So there are a lot of reasons why we don't want this anymore. And I don't think anyone uses it anymore. So it's not going to hurt anyone either. And I'm giving you a heads up time. So if you're a user of this, let us know if you're uh, sort of, if you're going to hurt by this move, let us know and we'll take it into consideration. I'm not sure what to do about it, but we, we want to know at least. And then, of course, I mentioned this before. Also, next year, then by, by the summertime, we're going to remove the space separated no proxy pattern support. Uh, basically, just in a way to make sure that we support the no proxy style of specifying 
proxy patterns the same way as most other tools and libraries do. <clears throat> yes, so. What? That would... <laughs> Everything is weird here. And that's, uh, yeah. Something is going on. Okay, next release is um, likely to become 8.6.0. We are, uh, of course, we have a bunch of things queued up that we wanted, want to do in that release. Uh, and uh, some of those things that we are planning to get into the next release. First, support for ECH, encrypted client hello, previously known, known as ESNI, encrypted server name I, identification. I, I, yeah, so encrypted client hello is a way to encrypt more data in, in the TLS handshake, in particular the SNI field. <clears throat> hide uh, the destination of your uh, TLS connection, uh, sort of the destination host name or the destination service. We are planning to implement this. This is just a millisecond version of the option without the, the underscore MS extension. It should be a very simple little thing. Just give you uh, the user a higher resolution timer. Another uh, curl, uh, timing information that we haven't really exposed to users so if you want if you for example if you're using a libcurl like transfer and you're limiting for example number of parallel connections curl could queue your transfer for a while until there's a connection available for you to run the transfer so this is a, a time information about how long did your transfer sit in the queue before it started uh, we have a new error code coming called curl to curl e too large. Basically, if a value set uh, is too large, or, or if something grow grew too large uh, to be acceptable and therefore causing an error. Uh, I mean, this error situation already exists, but this is a way to give you a better error code to understand better what actually happened. We are probably going to move or introduce trace info and verbose info for the DO, the NSO HPS communication slightly differently to sort of using the trace config way we introduced a few versions ago. Maybe a new uh, return code for the write function callback. So a few things that we have. Those things are mostly already in the as a pull, they exist as pull requests on, on GitHub. So we can go there already and start checking them out. So next release is planned for January 31 next year, 2024, unless we consider some of the bugs that we clearly have in this version already. Maybe some of them are too annoying to, to wait until the end of January. And then in, in that case, we will do an earlier patch release, but I hope we can avoid that. During our uh, release cycle, you can, of course, always go to this URL and check out the pending release notes. We, we keep that up to date during the cycles. So we update that uh, every now and then. So you can go and see there the pending release notes for the coming release. What are we planning to do <clears throat> going forward? Uh, yes, so we have this release cycle, as I mentioned before, it is a release Wednesday, that's today. We have 10 days to sort of figure things out. Um, wait, maybe we have need to do a patch release, maybe not. We just make sure that everything works. We get read reports, we start to fix bugs. And then 10 days later, it's a Saturday, we, add a, we go into the feature window period, three full weeks when we actually allow everyone to not everyone. We allow features to get much changes into the Git repository. And after those three weeks, that's another Saturday then, of course, uh, we enter the feature freeze period where we no longer introduce features. We just bu fix bugs until the release Wednesday, and then we ship a release, and then we start over again. And in this particular cycle, of course, December 6 is today. December 16 is when we go into the feature, we open the feature window 
on January 6th, we close the feature window again, and then we can do the next release on January 31. That's the ideal cycle uh, here. I, of course, always want to emphasize that I do curl support uh, full-time uh, all day, every day. So if you have a problem, you want to help with your commercial use of curl, get in touch and we can help you already today. If you find issues, bugs, typos, problems, do submit them on GitHub on this URL. Or if you have a security problem, go to hackerone.com slash curl instead and um, tell us about it and we will work on that feature, uh, sorry, the problem there. <clears throat> like we did with those two CVs we announced in this release. Um, we keep that, of course, private and secret until the day we release all the details, as always. And I want to mention, of course, the um, the uh, cool official curl sponsors of curl uh, in December 2023. They are uh, this cool team. They have a bunch of um, <clears throat> main sponsors and a bunch of silver sponsors. And the screen looks all weird, but uh, maybe it's it's acting up for me. But um, I don't know what to do about it. Let's see if it what happens. Yeah, let's forget about that um, and just say that uh, this was is curl. 8.5.0 and um, December 6. I suggest you go to the curl.se site and read the full change log if you want to find out about more the extensive change log and all the data and everything. And uh, then until next release, um, goodbye.